Hello and welcome to Breakout Assault. So today let's take a look at the VFC MV5 A5 version 2. So out of the box you get your gun, your magazine and they also gave you a BB loader with an adapter. And this adapter is for loading the BB vertically. Now your normal GBB loader can also load the magazine, but it's not as efficient as good as this one for loading the MP5. So one of the main difference between version 1 and version 2 is the boat. So on version 1 the boat is more realistic, you get a few different material but also in the MP5, the bow head and the bow carrier is two separate pieces. So at, at the same time, it's more fragile. So on version 2, it's just one big chunk of metal. It's more durable, but it's less realistic. So it's depending on if you wanted the MP5 as a wall hanger or if you're actually fielding with it to choose between the version 1 and version 2 bolts. And the second thing that they improve is the magazine. Now, since the on wheel steel, the MP5 does not have a bow stop. So when the gun empty the magazine, there's no bullets in here. So even when you pull the trigger, the firing pin is not hitting on anything. But in airsoft, since the power is coming from the magazine, the gun will still dry fire without any BB coming out. So in order to simulate the bolt stop system, they have raised the BB feeder up. So what it does is this one is blocking the nozzle. So when the nozzle usually has you know the little thing that's sticking out, it usually pushes the BB up to the chamber. So if this part comes up, the nozzle will get stopped right here, so it doesn't reset the trigger, so you can pull the trigger for the next round. So that is to simulate the stop firing effect. So I'll just quickly show you guys. So you have your magazine in. And you see how the bolt doesn't go all the way back. So right now, when you press the trigger, the hammer doesn't get reset. So we're putting the mag out, notice the bolt will go back to it to its original position and then now the hammer reset and now you can pull the trigger so this is just to simulate the bolt stop so it won't be dry fire now as for comparison between this and the VFC SD3 version 2 is the hop up system on that one you have to unscrew the fixed suppressor you have to like get a long foot has key and then you turn the hop up right somewhere here and here you basically take down this pin Remove the handguard and your hop up wheel is right here for adjusting more and less hop. And it's also tactile. You hear the little clicks, so you know exactly how much hop you're doing, so you know exactly how much hop you're applying. So when you're done, you just pop the handguard back in and you push this pin back in. And on marking, so you have the 9mm 19 rounds, you have the HK MP5 and a serial number. And here, when it came on the box, it has a Made in Taiwan sticker. And after you remove, remove it, you will see a marking for Made in West Germany. And there's also this slicing trademark of HNK. And also, another big difference is the MP5 A5 has a 3 round burst, whereas the SC3 you only get the SMB and for water. And then you have your standard iron sight and the rear sight can adjust the vintage so you loosen up this screw and you can adjust the left and right with this screw and after you're done you can tighten this up and also the most fun part of HK MP5 is the HK slap so when you pull out the so when you pull back the bow you insert the magazine and you release the bolts and some people can some people tend to slap the bow with it but in airsoft you do that too much it will break very soon and on the back you get a retractable stock it's only for one position only. Now as for shooting experience, on semi-auto, the bow bag is very nice, very crisp, and you can empty the magazine nicely. First fire feels awesome, the three round burst is exactly where it should be. And on full auto, I think in the last few rounds, you get a bit of cool down, so you can kind of feel the MP5 lagging a little bit. And now for accuracy test, I use, a, I use a tripod stand to help me stabilize the gun, but I did not clamp down the handguard as I would do to, let's say, my PDW because of the plastic handguard. So I was afraid that it might crack the handguard, so I was kind of doing a support. And also, I don't have a red dot, so also I was aiming with the iron sight. And in 15 meters range on semi auto, you get about a hand size grouping which is I think it's pretty decent for out of the box at 15, 15 meters
at least it is very CQB ready. I mean, the average Hong Kong engagement distance CQB is maybe 10 meters, so 15, you're really pushing some of the longer range in the CQB field. And for three round bars, the grouping is about the same. And as for full auto, couldn't really control the gun. So when when I was at first when I pull the trigger, it kind of go up, and then I tend to pull it back down. But then it, I might have pulled it too much, so you can see I miss all the target. But if you see the plastic sheet behind the target, you can see the grouping. I think it's about a little bit bigger than hand size also. So accuracy wise, I think it's decent for something out of the box. Now seeing it has a burst fire, so I did a little bit more playing with the burst fire mode. So what I have here, I set up 9 targets from range of 5 meters to 50 meters. And on each target, I have an A4 size paper. A4 size is similar to leather size, but it's a bit thinner and taller. So what I did is I will do a burst fire on each target. So when 3-1 is done, I move to the next one and I just fire 9 consecutively. And since this is airsoft, if you get it once, you're out of the game. So, so if I get one hit on a paper, I'll call it a hit. And upon the nine target, I have a 100% kill rate. And some of the paper, I got all three hits on target. So the next test I did is the double tap. The time it took me to do a double tap and the burst fire is very similar. So then I did another test on double tap all nine targets, and I also can hit every single one. And on some of them, I am getting one or two less BBs on target. So in gaming situation, I think the burst fire can help you get the enemy sooner. I mean, if you get one more BB hit, it might be that when it hits part of the hand or whatever. And overall, the gun feels pretty solid. It doesn't have really much moving part. And the hand guard, although it's plastic or polymer when you squeeze it when you squeeze it to hold it tight it doesn't have the squeaking sound that some other brand might have and on the retractable stock if you're pushing it against your body you get a slight rotation left and right but i think it's about like one or two millimeters only and it shows about 1.1 joules which is perfectly fine for cqb so the price tag of this in hong kong is about 450 us and I think it's on the expensive side on the SMG category, GBB category. I mean, the MP7, you can get it for about 300 bucks. But if you really like MP5, and the construction of this MP5 is very awesome, the performance is acceptable, and the hop up tuning is very easy on this one. So I think overall, this is a pretty fun and pretty good gun to get. I mean, as a first impression or unboxing feel, I, I can't really complain anything on this gun. So yeah, this is it for the review on the VFC MP585 version 2.